welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this is the Thunder Show, aka WLTV, the first and only. I don't know if it's the first, is it? Probably the first. Probably not. A wine show on the internet that you watch sometimes. Sorry. Anyway. So thank you so much for yesterday. Uh, you know, it was uh, it was my birthday. Thanks for the people that emailed me. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. I had a lovely evening. Got some great, great gifts. And I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great to start off the Thunder Show today and show you some of the things I got yesterday for my birthday? I thought everybody would enjoy that and think that's kind of cool. So let me show you a couple things. I mean, I'm really pumped. I mean, got a great gift of an Andre the Giant original Afro figure, you know, that's got to get on the Thunder Show so Nikolai the Sheik, Hogan, and Piper can have somebody to play with. Uh, one of the other really exciting gifts is that I got a Venom action figure. And, uh, oh, his tongue comes out, man. I like that. This is a, a big time figure. That's Venom. He's a great guy. Now, this was way up there for me. It got a red Snaggletooth Star Wars figure, not to be confused with the rare blue Sears exclusive Snaggletooth that rolls in like 200 bucks a pop. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. So that's awfully exciting. Now, some of the stuff really got serious as the presents kept opening. I got a Millennium Falcon. And I mean, what kid doesn't want that? So that's really exciting. You know, you can re you know, I got the Snaggletooth, the Falcon. That's pretty darn exciting. And then, come on, we talked about Aquaman, but the Flash. I mean, Flash, look at this. Superpowers action figure from Flash. I'm really, you know, he's fast, man. He's fast. I like that a whole, whole lot. And you know I like to talk about Strawberry Short King girl stuff, so why not retro 80s, say with me ladies, Poochie. Yes, Poochie made a gift appearance and I like, I like Poochie, so I'm excited about that. And finally, the gift. You know, I went wild, like that kid, remember that Super Nintendo commercial that went, the video that went crazy viral? Well, the N64, thanks sir. Well, I kind of did the same thing when I got this. I mean, who needs a Wii? I got an Odyssey 200. I mean, come on. This will be all night play action tonight for me. I could not wait to play it, but you know, we had to come to work and do the Thunder Show, but as soon as this is done taping, I will rock anybody in Snafu on Odyssey 2000. Bring it and let me bring you a wine show because that's why you're really here. And the St. Julian 2006 Riesling will start the show. I have no idea how much this wine costs because I don't do the homework sometimes necessary for the show, so I do apologize. But I assume it's a $10 range uh, Riesling. It is from Michigan. I brought the big ass glass because I'm in a big ass mood and most importantly because the Beaujolais Nouveau 2007 is in the hizzy and that's what everybody wants to talk about. So St. Julian, let's see what's going on here. Michigan wanting to represent um, and uh, you know people have been asking. This is the I promised episode of the, the last wine I've been promising to do so the Beaujolais. I'm excited. Really light, nice golden color from this reason. Let's give it a sniffy sniff because that's how we do. Nice little lemon peel, very classic Riesling-esque on the nose. I get some back-end hints of lime, um, which are quite nice, very fresh and vibrant on the nose. Very classic Riesling. I do get a little bit of like a, like a lit match component coming through on the nose, which I think is very complex and interesting. Let's give this wine a whirl. I mean, this is pretty pleasant. Let's give us one more shot. This is a good little effort. There's some nice back end um, honeydew, honeysuckle flavors. I really like it actually. It's very fresh and forward. If I'm correct that it is in this $10 range, I think this wine is an actual really nice winner. Listen, this is not the most complex Riesling I've ever had. It rolls in at about 87, 88 points for me, but I think that is extremely good. I'm liking this, and I can see this being a tremendous Thanksgiving wine. You know, I love Rieslings this time of year. Um, I think of Rieslings like I think of apple cider. I mean, it's just something about when that chill hits the air. You know, the one that makes you cry because you know school's starting? Now that chill's been pushed back all the way to November. It's still warm outside. Um, on the East Coast. Um, of America. Um, I like it. Fresh apples, good solid Riesling, extremely impressive, and another example of the wine world changing. And you know, remember, little 
you, it's really you, the wineries, the fans, everybody, and that's what I'm talking about. Michigan rolling in with a Riesling that I think is extremely strong, and I would be more than happy to match up against a load of California versions and Oregon and Washington State. I mean, this is, a, and New York State, this is a domestic Riesling that needs to be reckoned with, and I'm very impressed with it. Great job, great start to the Thunder Show, and that is what is going on in wine and getting me excited. All right, now this is probably the greatest marketing situation in the history of the wine industry. So right on that alone, huge, huge kudos to George DeBuff. This is the Beaujolais Nouveau 2007, and thousands and thousands and thousands of you are gonna be rushing out to the stores acting like it's Cabbage Patch or Power Ranger time, body slamming. I saw a lady smack a lady circa 1995 shoppers discount liquors before we were wine library because they were fighting over the last bottle of the Beaujolais Nouveau. It was crazy. Any cahoots. This is the 07 version. Again, kind of like the first French wine in the marketplace. This was flown in by air. So the whole spiel, it's like $9.10 now. It used to be like five bones. So you know, they're capitalizing a little bit. Plus the euro is probably the real factor in this, so to be fair. Um, so let's see what this is. You know, the Gamay grape, it's a Beaujolais Nouveau. Let's uh, give it a sniffy sniff. Little sour cranberry kind of component on the nose. Um, we, did, we did this wine last year, which was a big hit. Mott, let's link it up. Almost to the day, a year, I think it was tomorrow, a year ago. Kind of, I kind of want to watch that to see how the show's changed in a year. Anyway, we're going to link that up for you. You can watch last year's episode of Beaujolais Nouveau. We'll see how they pair up against each other. A little sour cranberry. There's also like a toxic component on the nose. Let me rephrase that. Uh, an aerosol kind of component. This is Jersey hair time in the girls' bathroom. I mean, it is what it is. So cranberries mixed in with Jersey Bon Jovi type hair for the ladies with the aerosol can on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. A very simple wine, um, you know, very one-dimensional cranberry component this year, which is fine because I kind of like cranberries. Um, no mid-palate whatsoever. The finish is austere, lacking any complexity. There's a, you know, 10th grade dance punch with cheap Smirnoff vodka kind of component going on in here as well. This is now starting to really bother my mouth. <laughs> um, I'm not down with this wine again. I mean, I am just baffled by the hysteria. Tradition is a funny thing. I mean, tradition is a funny thing. I don't know, it's like Tom Cruise. I mean, you know, it's over. I mean, it is what it is. You have a career, it is what it is. One day, you know, I'll say sniffy sniff and I'll get kicked in the neck. I mean, it is what it is. It is time to let George DeBuff Beaujolais Nouveau go. Let it go. We can enjoy other things. Drink Michigan Riesling. Do something, but don't drink this. I mean, there are just too many other experiences, and now at 10 bucks, that I promise you that you could do a lot better with. I'm gonna give this wine a major pass. I'm rolling in about 67 points in this wine, and I'm going to move on and just try to forget what that did to my pack. Venom attack. All right, sorry. Anyway, let's move on. This is a wine that a lot of wine nerds, sorry dudes, but it is. It's a nerdy wine from Languedoc Roussillon. Uh, this is the Combe del Mas 2006 Chistis. Uh, this is a blend of Grenache, predominantly old vine Grenache, with a little bit of Carignan from the Languedoc, 91 points, David Schuchnick. And uh, he's now writing for Robert Parker, uh, wine advocate. 91 bo points for him, 26 bones, not inexpensive, from a very uh, different part of the world. Uh, Southwest France, at Languedoc, um, you know, is a very interesting area, producing enormous amounts of high-quality, value-driven wines, a place that I think a lot of you need to spend a lot more time in. I need to spend more time on the Thunder Show on. We're going to be doing that. We're going to start re right now with this wine. Traditionally, I've had a couple of vintages two or three vintages ago that completely was an extremely solid, well-made wine. This is the 05 version, 14.5 alcohol content. And right off the bat, I'm very impressed with the color. I mean, we're always giving good color to everybody, but this does have a nice little, even like an inkier kind of component to the color. Let's give this wine a sniffy sniff and see like what's going down. 
very interesting nose. It's, it's kind of tight. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is, is burgers. Um, so it's got a grilly kind of burger, ground meat kind of component on the nose. I'm also getting some really interesting secondary uh, red beet component on the nose, which I'm finding quite fascinating and interesting. Um, really obvious kind of soy sauce, Asian spice, you know, you know, Far East kind of spices going on. I mean, really like going to the market in Pakistan, let's say, kind of thing. So. Very, very herbal, spice-driven wine on the nose, mixed in with a little bit of hints of leather now coming through, opening up along the way, kind of interesting. Very nice nose, I'm liking the nose quite a bit. Let's give this a whirl. Frank Family Zinn just got knocked out of the steel cage and is being replaced as my choice for Thanksgiving by this wine. This is incredible. Let's pay attention. We can get serious now. You know, I really want to get focused on this wine because it's really kind of killing me. Give me a sec here. This is an extremely gamey, venison-driven flavor profile on the mouth. Really attacks your palate with a singular blueberry jam focus. Um, ripping through my palate, round, lush flavors dancing around everywhere. I am adoring the um, oregano meets black pepper kind of mixture of spices here. Secondary mustard components on the finish, really long and intense. Blackberry jam dancing and exploding on the end of my palate here. This is a wine that I desperately want to match with food because this is complex, rich, and focused. This is the kind of wine that really makes me realize that I'm a clown and I'm not drinking enough wines from this region. This is really serious. There's an overriding on the beginning, and then it goes to that blackberry, but it really a showering of strawberry candies in the beginning. Just really nice. Oh man, this is really, really well done and has completely cleaned up my palate from the last situation. I'm really appreciating that. This is a, also a wine that is giving me a secondary lilac and lavender kind of component, very flowery. Very complex wine. Kind of need to sit down with this a little bit longer. Don't want the show to go run too long. This is the kind of wine that you really want to break down in decanter and maybe go three, four, five hours with. This is jammy and explosive enough to really grab my attention, yet structured and elegant and refined and and um, kind of, um, what am I looking for here, like subtle about so many of the second and third tier flavors that this wine has that I'm just thinking. You know, I want to write a thesis on this wine. Um, this is a wine that I'm going to score 93 points and highly recommend that everybody writes it down, does what, you know, text yourself, write on a business card, tattoo it on your leg, write it on your hand and pen. So many people still do that, I couldn't believe it. Anyway, do something, find this, try this. You will not be disappointed. This is real wine. 93 points, 26 bucks, and I'm feeling it. That was awesome. And now I'm going into a monster of a wine, so I'm super excited. Pax, 2006, young for this monster. Alder Springs, Syrah. Sorry, I paused there. 14.9% alcohol content, 75 US dollars. This comes from Mendocino County, so I'm excited about that. Only 24 barrels of this wine are made, 565 cases of this wine, very sought after, um, really interesting. It is a collector's kind of wine, mailing list only kind of thing. Uh, Pax has everybody's attention, everybody's talking about Pax. They're big purple monster wines. I mean, look at this. 
I mean, there's definitely, you're going to see really dark, massive wines. So I'm excited about getting into this. And before I give this a snippy, snip and get it, let me let it open up a little bit. I'm going to give a big shout out to my friends at Vidler. A lot of you always talk about Vidler, which is where we host these videos. Uh, they did something cool. If you, They've actually come out with a financial plan. Like, you know, we're not going to put the ads on because it's just not my scene. But if you're loading up videos, they've got like a, some sort of commerce situation where they share ad revenue with you 50-50. I want to give them a shout out, you know, just because they've been really good to us. And I think what they're doing is really awesome awesome for the community so you know if you're loading bids it's kind of cool there's what it is also I'm gonna give you a huge thing I got pounded with emails yesterday and I finally decided to kind of break down so I'm gonna do it but there's something awesome going on oh and also geez I'm so glad I just remembered this the big announcement for the contest to sit with me on the Thunder Show just like my pops did yesterday is hopefully gonna come tomorrow we might have to stretch it into Monday but I think I'm gonna announce it on Friday's show it's going to be totally awesome <laughs> Anyway, let's get into this wine. Talk about totally awesome. This should be a fruit bomb explosion. Mike Tyson left uppercut to your face wine. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. And hello, blueberry pie. Um, just rolling deep with the blueberry crew on the nose. Very licorice driven, very, very thick, viscous on the nose. I know that's kind of weird, but that's how I do things sometimes. Almost like paint, very rich uh, grape. Big league chewish, kind of just almost like blueberry stew, if there's such a thing. Can somebody, t Ma, do you know something? Eric, ever hear blueberry stew? Is there if anybody makes blueberry stew, let me know, because I'd like to smell it, because I think that's what this smells like. Let's give it a whirl. Hmm, a little bit more green than I expected, yet a very young wine, obviously. I mean, this is a massively rich, explosive fruit bomb, and there's a lot of people that love this style, and I understand why. There's some creaminess, there's hints of vanilla, blackberries, very well made. Unlike so many of the fake fruit bombs, this doesn't taste artificial, it tastes like the fruit from the actual fruit, you know, instead of maybe sugar added. Um, some great purity, I love the little hints of vanilla flashing towards the end. Little hints of like acorn kind of coming up on me. Little walnut kind of component, kind of interesting. Almost like white wine characteristics. Um, but then, huge attack, kind of like, hey, here's an acorn. <laughs> you know, kind of like that kind of move, um, just the power smacks you in the face. Big monster wine. For Fruit Bomb New World fans, this is more structured and true than many versions out there. So I kind of like it for that. I'm gonna score 92 points, I like it a lot. Will I buy three bottles of this over a bottle of this? You bet, every single time. However, are they coming for me? However, this is a very good example if you're really into the massive, explosive, rich, over the top Barossa, Colt, Syrah, Turley kind of stuff, then this is a wine I think you can really enjoy. Very solid effort, nice wine, a little coffee-esque on the, on the finish. It would be nice to see what happens with this wine in two or three years. I think it's a pretty pretty serious effort and a really good, good job. And This has been a good show. Oh, I want to talk about one other thing. One of the presents I got yesterday that I really loved was a book called Nine. It's about the Supreme Court. I'm going to roll deep through that book. I can't wait. But I finished up this book. I wanted to give it a shout-out. Ma, lick it up because this book deserves a little play. I want to get, get more into reading the books and... This book uh, is really good. Uh, service included, outrageous. If you're a foodie and you want to know the behind the scenes of what's going on in a restaurant that I love more than anything, per se, in New York City, this book gets deep, it gets into some personal stories. It's, it, this is a book that you need to seriously seek out. I'm curious, you know, I, I, I'm gonna send you the link. I'd like to see what the Amazon reviews are. But definitely a very powerful, solid, quick, gourmet, foodie kind of read, which I think a lot of you may be like out there. So if you uh, are looking for something for the holidays to read or something like that, I'm giving this a huge shout out. I'm like Oprah now. She sells a billion books. I sell none, but at least I do my thing. Gary's Book Club. That's right. Venom. Venom. Okay, the deal I promised you. You want something, I want something. I'm going to do something now that I said I wasn't going to do, and so I'm going to whisper to you off screen because I feel bad because I, I promise I wouldn't do it, but... I love you guys, so I'm gonna do it. So, psst, psst, psst. first and foremost, you can't tell anybody about this, so that's number one. Number two, 
you want something, but I want something too. I'm having a lot of fun with our new Ask Gary app on Facebook. I want to really res you know, bring it back. As a matter of fact, let me give you a quick little note. Tomorrow's show, I will be bringing back questions. This I can do in here. You know, you like when I do the Friday laid back and I did questions. People have been really complaining. I'm bringing it back. Ask Wine Library, been a little bit weird with the servers. We're going to figure it out. But for now, we're going to move it to Ask Gary, the app on Facebook. So I know you got to go to Facebook. Facebook should start paying me. It's ridiculous. Zuckerberg, you owe me like $13. Anyway, um, so we're going to do that. We're going to, tomorrow's questions for Wine Library TV are going to come from the Ask Gary section. So here's what's going to go down. Like 40,000 of you said, screw the t-shirts. I want free shipping. And I understand. So, you know, here's what we're going to do. If you use the Ask Gary app, if you ask me a question, then you can go to winelibrary.com and use the password Ask Gary, and you will get free shipping on anything you want. You don't have to, anything you want, but you better use it wisely because this is it. So, free shipping. I'm giving it to you because I love you, because you love me, because I saw what happened yesterday, but that's all we're going to say about that. So, Ask Gary. Ask away. Ask away and you will get the free shipping that you've been asking for. Question of the day. What wine have you tried that you would have never tried pre-Wine Library TV that you absolutely adored? Really curious about that. Lurkers, thanks for coming out yesterday. It was big. Because you, with a little bit of me and a couple of bribes with free shipping, we're changing the wine world.